Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Hill. Uh, Herbert House is not just a school that produces some fantastic talent in the performance world. It's a school that offers so many different things to so many different people. And my guest today is the perfect example of this. Joining me on the show is an ex-Herbert pupil that has gone on one incredible journey in the world of business since leaving us here in 2005. He currently runs Africa's leading food and service delivery online platform and was the recipient of the 2020 People's Choice Awards at the UK Innovation Awards. His journey to the top, though, was not easy at all. And trust me when I say this is one of the most incredible success stories you'll ever hear. I'm so pleased to welcome back ex Herbert student and mega entrepreneur, Abbas Dayek. Do you want to clap yourself? No, you don't. No, very good, very good. Um, Abbas, thank you so much uh, for coming back and joining us. It's my pleasure. The year is 2024, which means it's 20 years this year since you left. Yes. Can you believe that? Well, I was thinking about that on my way here in the car. Just uh, reminiscing on how actually, you know, when when people or maybe our parents or people around us say, you know, actually time flies by. Yeah, it really <laughs> you does. Know? And then when we're a bit younger, you know, you always think that, you know, time is on your side. And, you know, actually things are not as quick as we expect it to be. And we want to actually hurry in life. And then it's thinking like, wow, it's been 20 years. I'm going back the same roads and I'm sort of grasping and understanding where I am and just thinking, you know, boom, in the click of a finger, you know, time just goes by. But everything is familiar too. And I guess well, that is uh, life in general, I guess. So you s- it still kind of feels the same even Definitely. 20 years on? De- I mean, even on my way in the, in the taxi, so I was just like telling to slow down here, trying to understand, taking this road. I mean, getting into Cranley. Yeah. Totally understood where I was, the fields, Sainsbury's, <laughs> you know, even the pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All good know? memories, so I'm like, sure. You know, like having a good understanding of it, but obviously time has moved on, you know. Yeah. We, 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 I mean, it's evolution of life, but you can understand that things that you are familiar with are, are still there. And that's a good feeling, honestly. Yeah. And, and talking about familiar kind of surroundings, we're here in Ewhurst, yeah. not at the school, one of the boarding houses. So you spent your time here. Weird kind of being back here, driving down that road. Definitely. I mean, even the, uh, I mean, the gentleman, the taxi driver, was telling me exactly where I told him, you know, just go to Ewhurst, you know, don't worry. He was obviously putting the sat nav, and then I got <laughs> it. Saw the turret, yeah, you know, the house, and understood it. And then uh, coming back here, I mean, I, I do remember uh, most of it. Yeah. I mean, thank God, I am gifted with memory. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's good to to have that sense of. Uh, uh that sense of uh, nostalgia if Absolutely. you wish and then knowing your reception also doesn't work you yeah that's a bit hard classic so. hurtwood you can't <laughs> contact anyone <laughs> you know so that's good to know Absolutely. And and for people that are watching this episode on YouTube, they can see this amazing, our next teacher of ours did a beautiful painting because this is what it looks like. And it's a really good representation. It's a beautiful place, you hearse, isn't it? Definitely. Let's jump forward then 20 years to today, 2024. And I want to talk about your business because you've had an incredible 20 years and we're going to go through that and, and come back to Herbert and how it all kind of happened. But oh yeah, now I'm going to read a little thing from your website, some little stats about, because I just think it's the most incredible business. So it's a uh, delivering courier service, correct? It's, it's Africa's lead food and professional services delivery online platform it's the leading one-stop solution for all your deliveries and professional service needs you must be so incredibly proud of, of what it is today tell us a little bit about it well oh, oh yeah now i mean let's say techno- technologically or like I, I didn't come out and created a new invention sure but you know in the developing world there are some giving uh, you know there are things we take for granted let's say here, for example, convenience, reliability, quality of service is sort of a given. You know, where in, um, in developing countries such as Nigeria, convenience, reliability, and quality of service is, uh, is, is missing in the market. So what did I do that was a bit different was to focus on those three principles. And that is what gave the growth of the business an extreme hardship. I mean, let's just see the unit economics even till today isn't so favorable to the market but we're betting on the future you know we're lo- we're looking long term and um, the growth in africa is is ex- ex- exceptional mm. i mean we're the fastest growing population on earth we have a medium range age of 17 years old i mean it's a it's an entrepreneurial paradise if you wish not just nigeria but africa i mean i'm in so many other startups where if I was to try and attempt this in Europe or in other different jurisdictions, 
I think the chances of success would be quite limited due to the formalities one has to put into place before launching a business. Whereas in Africa, you know, um, we cherish entrepreneurs and risk-taking, which I think is a fundamental ingredient that uh, anyone must have if they would like to attempt such, uh, such uh, ambitions one might sure. have. So, so the key to it is being in Africa and Nigeria because you're given the freedom, I suppose, to, to kind of have that exactly. idea. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, legislation-wise, you know, they're not so tough on you on the beginning. Go ahead, try, you know, and then uh, we see where things go. You yeah. Know, that's the motto we, we live in. And, I mean, we, we solve many different critical problems for even established e-commerce businesses, but we still run at a loss. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, wow. Because, you know, unlike, let's give an example... In Europe, I mean, logistics isn't a company; doesn't have to undertake that. It's sure. outsourced. Yeah, you know, you could ha you you might have spare time and said, you know, here's my bicycle or my motorbike. Let me just make some, you know, additional revenue streams. That doesn't that that doesn't work in our area. Sure, of in our neck of the woods. So the unit economics takes time, but you know, you have to be a bit more uh, creative. That's another thing about. Uh, I mean, I would like to speak about Africa in general. Sure. Yes, Nigeria is the is the main hub for for entrepreneurs in Africa, but it's the same standard in multiple different countries. I mean, we all follow the same uh, routines that we have to find our own adaptability into making things work. So let's say Oya now pivots in the next few weeks into more of a concierge service. Food is an option. Okay. You know, while we cater to the B2B businesses and also to the consumers, I've had an exit in the market recently of a, a public listed company exited from the food space due to the cash burn demand on the sector. So for a startup, like, well, we still consider ourselves startup. Sure. To still be six years into it and you have an established company saying, I would like to uh, uh, I would like to leave this terrain mm. is also what we consider a market defense. Yeah. So why I like to focus in the developing world is because it's as difficult to establish a business and at the same time it makes it very uh, it defends your market from other people saying you know what great there's money to be made here let's just copy paste and get into the market that doesn't work no it's <laughs> a really tough environment then to, to kind of launch businesses and, and maybe maintain as well oh my god yeah. maintaining is a business by itself yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah, I can imagine know. so population of Nigeria I think is just over 190 million yeah which yes. is and I know that's kind of the hub but Africa in general these are huge places to kind of cover yeah. yet you're the leader there uh, you have a team of how many people it's not just you is it no well now we go into outsourcing into right. third parties so let's say core team are like 120 and then we obviously partners with 3pls which will be able to conduct those deliveries sure so i mean those are contracting uh, we contract it uh, to third parties but in general I mean, as a whole community together, we're like 500, 700 that indirectly wow. or directly are associated to the business. So a big kind of operation to undertake. Definitely. And if we spoke about Europe there and, and, and UK, maybe we think about companies such as, I don't know, Amazon, Delivery, Ocado for food, things like that. Is it kind of all of that wrapped into one with medicine and laundry? Is it everything in one? Oh, yeah, now. Definitely. Now I understand it and I've got my head around it because it's such a complex thing and in a difficult kind of place to do it. Let's go all the way back again. Let's go back to Herbert and let's find out how you got there because it wasn't an easy journey. We'll come back here to you, Hearst. You, 20 years ago, 2002 to 2004 that you studied 2003 here. 2003 to 2005. Of course, because of the... Oh, it was 2003 to five. Yes. There you go. So to, actually 19 years ago then. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, I was born in 2002. So that's embarrassing <laughs> for you. I was one at least when you when you were here. Yeah. Um, but at Hertwood, you studied economics, business and, and French. French. Yeah. Yes. Oh, did you enjoy French? The way you said it there no, was... Like, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I'm fluent in French. Oh, so you must have done really well then. Yes, definitely. I, that was my A. So you were guaranteed the yeah, French I mean, is going to be a good in one. In life, you have to be reasonable too and then give your best chances. You yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I moved here because I was in Swiss boarding school and then I really wanted a change. And my uncle was also here. So my uncle oh, was okay. also in Newhurst. You know, and then my uncle told me, you know, there's a school called Hurtwood. You know, I really like it. You know, and I think it would do you some good. So I said, you know, let me come and visit and then take it from there. And I had different options too. And then, but the good thing is, because this was the closest option first, mm. so my, I came with my grandmother, I remember back then, um, I said, I met Mr. Jackson, and then, honestly, without exaggeration, I mean, I just had an extremely good feeling, and then on my way back, 
uh, to London. I told my grandmother, you know, I don't want to go see the other places. Wow. I, I'm set on, on coming here. And, and what, I, So why was that feeling? What was it about here that just made you... I mean, you the, the interaction I had with Mr. Jackson, like, okay. you know, trying to... Okay, so my... I mean, uh, I would say, like, I mean, educationally, systems... Uh, I mean, Switzerland was a bit French system with American, but, you know, how they like to categorize you. But I liked it was more Mr. Jackson focusing on me as a person. Right. You know, what am I looking for? What am I expecting to get out of this? And I explained to him, you know, why... Would he see some kind of structure in my my Swiss school's position, you know? And I explained, and he focused more on me as an individual than on, you know, what was perceived about me. And then that was extremely welcoming and refreshing, to be very honest. So, and then I just, I, I, re, I, I just had a, I definitely, you know, I don't say this, and I'm here sitting in, and you heard so and heard with saying, but whenever I speak to like friends or this who would speak about education, I explain to them why I think for me this is the best school and best system and approach to an individ to an individual, and I cherish that because I wouldn't know if I would have had that educational uh, benchmark if it wasn't for coming through here because you were categorized before. If you don't fit to this norm, that's it. You know, finish. You sure. Know, you're so those old systems, you say the American one, the French, it yeah, didn't really work for you. Especially the French. Yeah. I mean, the French was like, you know, wh why do I have to recite, uh, you know, something and learn it by heart and then write it down? Okay, I'm a left-handed person. How, how does that bother you? You know, why should I be right-handed? Yeah, sure. <laughs> what's the problem? Yeah. You know, what's the problem? I, I, you know. So it was it was the way the education system yes, happened at hurt with the definitely appeal and to my you. interaction with the teachers and sure. Graham back then because he was also a headmaster here and then with my uncle. So he he sat down, spoke to me, and then I I just, I just felt so comfortable about uh, about the school that I just wanted to come here automatically. Sure, and and you did mention in an interview about. You, I quote, I quote. You said Hurtwood makes it impossible to fail. Yes, definitely. What, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I mean it's impossible. I think if, if you if you genuinely have, so let's not exaggerate here. But if you have twenty percent of uh, wanting to accomplish something, twenty percent, mm. I think the system here is just perfect for you. I mean, the interactions the teachers have with you on a weekly basis, you know, and you, you don't feel uncomfortable in the classrooms, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, even if things are not going so well, it's not so dramatic, you know, they will spend the time to explain to you how things can be done. Oh, don't worry, you know, we can go through this together. So it was so tailored and comforting that, you know, it was not all doom and gloom, and if you do not conform to this specific thing that we just put, you know, in front of you, like other systems or other environments, you know, that's it for you. Yeah. You know, so, and then you keep on doing, and you never left, I never felt left behind. You know, that's something other systems, I think, um, you know, purposely or not, I mean, you know, that's their own way of doing things. You know, you always feel there's catch-up. Okay, yeah. You know, here, No. You know, We're always one ahead. Yeah, yeah, I always know that I'm going to make... I, I, I felt I remember going into... Don't forget, I'm coming from Switzerland. I, I barely did any GCSEs there. So I'm coming directly here and then going to A-levels. So, <laughs> you, you, so, so you, weren't the, you weren't the perfect student before <laughs> no, you came here, no. Yeah, definitely. Because, no, first of all, they only offered back then because it was American and French in Switzerland. So I, I would give them credit for that. So it was sure. not, like, tailored to a British system, you know. But then I just came with uh, French and English as a GCSE. That That's was it. all. Wow. You know, and then coming here, obviously I had to take maths just to make sure. And, uh, you know, I was, like, thinking, whoa, you know, I'm going straight to economics. Big <laughs> stuff. I'll leave the French, you know, I'm sure I, I knew yeah. I could maintain it, you know, but I have to, like, uh, catch up. So I was thinking, you know, this is going to be quite a task ahead of me, especially going into classrooms and, you know, everybody just finished their GCSEs and, you know, they're on time. But I did not feel left behind. And, I, and the, the, the amount of attention that one is given, it's, it's phenomenal that when I remember when I was prepping for my exams or going into it, I didn't have any anxiety. You were, you were, that's what <laughs> I did. <laughs> you, you know, that says a lot about you yeah, and me. Honestly, I, I really didn't. Because I, I did economics <laughs> yeah, as well. Um, I'm not as successful as you in economics. Um, but you're right, the tailored education is something that's really special about here, for yeah. sure. And before we kind of leave this section, if you like, about you, Hurst, I have got a photo behind me that you might be interested to see. I know once we're done, you're going to have a little look around. And what's amazing about them, we have photos of every year group. See if you can find yourself in this. I'll pass it across. So this was 2004. 
I'll let you hold that. So we take photos every single year of, of the class. Yeah. Yes. You found yourself? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like you're enjoying yourself in the photo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but seeing that and seeing other kind of classmates of that year brings back good oh, memories. Yeah. Are you still I mean, in touch with example, any of these guys? Yeah. Uh, see, Mark here, I just, you know, I was in Jersey for work for a day, New Year's Day. Oh. I actually caught up with him after 20 years. Wow. Abdullah here in the picture. I mean, he's my neighbor here in London. I see him like every other week. Wow. Um, who else do I? Well, Megan works in the city here. Whenever she has time, every few months, we do definitely connect. You, you say about making it impossible to fail, and I feel the same in my year group, is it's not just one person that goes on to do well. It's loads of people, isn't it? And it's yeah. amazing to see you still connect. I'm going to pass this yeah. to our glamorous producer, Elliot. But he can't come on screen. Yeah. <laughs> we don't pay him enough for a visual. <laughs> uh, right, uh, let's move on then. End of Hurt with 2005 comes about. Yes. Um, you joined your family business, but it didn't really work out for you tell me about that kind of time in your life because i always felt a bit of a sidetrack but things like when you when i learned to drive a car i learned the lessons you pass your test but my dad always said you don't learn how to drive a car until you actually pass and you're on the road on your own and i suppose with business you can learn it in a classroom you can learn it in a lecture hall but until you're actually in the business world and start doing things that's where you learn exactly well yeah exactly and maybe the family business was like that for you no or? i mean the family business you know i mean we again life we assume you know, assumption is finish, uh, you know, your studies and everything. Business is there. Yep. Join. It's established. Everyone's happy. One plus one equals two. Yeah. You know, and then more, the more you go into life, the more you understand those assumptions don't really click for many other reasons. You know, so I, that's one thing, you know, I always say I, whenever I speak to like to my younger cousins or sometimes I, I do put like to put effort because this journey wasn't easy too. No. You know, I think it's always better to prepare even if things look straightforward. You know, point is you're done, go work for the family. Who would then, well, but you have to prepare yourself. So one part is I just didn't do that. You know, so I just thought that's it, you know, go to family business and, you know, we take it from there. Obviously due to family dynamics, you know, uh, I learned very quick that this environment isn't going to let me prosper, if you wish. So, you know, obviously, family, there's family politics. Sure. You know, and then I decided, you know what? I, I'm young. I'm young once. And then well, what am I going to do? Just wait and see, which I have an understanding. Things won't change or actually let's take a leap forward and and and, ex and try out what's out there. So a little bit like the Hurtwood education system, you could have just conformed to what everyone expects, yeah. a normal system, but you wanted more, and I suppose. Definitely. And you then went to China. I don't know how quick after yeah. that was. Or Well, I left Nigeria, and then I moved to Beirut, so which is my ancestral home. So I'm ethnically Lebanese, right. but my parents are born in Nigeria, so I'm okay. third generation there. So I do say that I'm ethnically Lebanese, but home is Nigeria. Sure. And, and your time in China, I've read is really where you kind of got the understanding for Oya now yes. and, and maybe how those countries work well I would say my first entrepreneurial journey started in Beirut so right. when I brought a brand from from France which was a friend of mine and I went into the market and the brand worked very well for the market so you know in terms of demographics, they like to feel special. They like to feel, you know, unique pieces, customizations, etc. But I learned the first lesson of business, which I was taught by. And by the way, this is also from Speed Simpson, my business teacher, back then when he said, you know, always think, you know, focus. I, I the most important lesson I've learned is the four P's: price, price, product, promotion. You know, I'm, try, you know, in life, try not to overcomplicate things. Of course, there are deeper meaning to different strategies but i believe in a business idea if you are if you are true to yourself you know the first thing you have to assess your idea is based based on those four p's price based product promotion if you are genuinely honest to yourself and you have a positive response after you assess your idea based on those four principles then i think you should move to a business plan so where did i wouldn't say go wrong but you know a learning curve is that okay I chose the right product. I chose the right place. Uh, sorry, right place meaning uh, product promotion and the wrong place and right. right price. So, you know, I chose Beirut when there was a civil war going on in Syria, you know, thinking this is not going to spill over. That was very naive. Right. You know, and one of those indicators not matching 
you know, or not necessarily coming together can be detrimental. In my case, that was extreme, you know, and let's say in other in other examples, you can adjust, you know, let's say redo your promotion price. But when you get placed wrong, that's I mean, that's it because the environment is out of your control. And no matter what you do in your business, it, it's out of your control. So there was a war ra raging on and then obviously consumers are no more there. And then what do you do? So the key is that all four have to work. All for four have to work. All four have to work to succeed. I think that's the basic principle of uh, of business. And then one other, I would say, learning curve. You know, you know, I don't like to use the word mistake. Not not to make people feel like oh, you're trying to like maybe. Uh, you know, make things sound better, but sure. there's no way you're going to have any understanding without trying. But unfortunately, there are a cost to that. Of course. <laughs> you know, there is a cost to that. Because it's fair to say you made everyone, and to make a successful business, it can never be successful. You can never have success without failures and bumps in the road. And you had quite a few... Oh, just be fair to tell me about some of those and I mean how they the, the, the you. first major one was was was, was uh, the the one in Beirut because that's the first time I actually like okay it was post me leaving a family business family telling me very excellent if you leave you know you're on your own then you know taking my mother's savings and then you know lose seeing it gone you know oh, wow. and then trying to think at the age of <laughs> twenty five. You know, what do you do next? So just so your family said, if you're going to leave us, that's fine. Yeah. But you're on your own. Yes. You took your mother's savings and lost them. Yeah, in that particular... Oh, wow. Uh, that, that, did that not go down well or...? Well, <laughs> you, know, when, when, you know, when you're in the midst of things, you know, it, it, it gets to you later. You know, because, mm. you know, the kind of brain is, you know, okay, how do my back's against the wall? If I have to stop and now start to think about the consequences of that, then I think you dig yourself a bigger hole. You know, it's not easy to process that. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but you've got to get up and go again. Yeah, you, you have to, unless you're basically, it's be it becomes like a quicksand. Sure. So you, know? you then get up, you go again. Yeah, well, I got up immediately. And by and by the way, knowing the years later, so this was like, so my granddad, which is the, my still my, my the family patron of my, of my family, yes. you know, s told my uncle, you know, take him to China. You know, because they wanted maybe to make me reconnect potentially with the family business. No, they so were trying. On, <laughs> yeah, so, but on my way to China, when I got there, I was like, wow, how did I miss this place? You know, wow. then it clicked, you know, to me that, okay, you know, China obviously is a, a rising star by now. or I mean, back then, by now, it's solidified that you cannot ignore China and, and China's uh, impact on the world. Mm. And then I started to use my uh, rational thinking from my first experience. Okay, so business to succeed, you have to most likely, you see, I went first into fashion. Fashion is choice. Does James like this? You know, well, yes or no. But if you're, if you're going to succeed in life, you have to see, you have to look at things from a, basis of odds so if i'm solving a problem the chances of that idea materializing into success or even sustainability increases vastly so what was i potentially filling the gap by when i moved to china okay so that's understand great so nigeria uh, china is the biggest trading block all right what by me being in china what am i potentially filling the gap okay i know that as I was seeing from many people, I started to think, okay, people go to China from Nigeria. They obviously cannot spend months there. The Chinese know that. So they know that you have to come and you have to leave with a deal. So the odds are in their favor. Right. You know, so they know, okay, look, you know, we can't stall by time. This is a proposition, you know, and then they know they can't leave all the way empty handed after going 16 hours across the world yeah <laughs> you know so i said okay great so where do i potentially fit in here i know my market i can then tell the my contacts uh, you know that i'm living in china so what do i have that's uh, that's uh, valuable to them time yeah you know? so i can now source take my time go to the different manufacturers do different meetings and then once the deal is starting to flow you can ask them to come from Nigeria. It looks simple. Yeah, but, but it's not. <laughs> you, you know. And it's, it's fascinating listening to you because I can see that your focus when doing all of this was to get in the mind of the consumer and, and, and s you're always looking to solve problems. I can yeah. see that. And that's why the business has been such a success. Yes, because you're solving someone's problem and you're making, you're, you're adding value. Yes. You know, so then you have time. Then you know that you get them a better quotation. Then you know you get them a better offer. And then when they come... 
there you know then they understand okay you know you have already you have already you know uh, they've already picked three different options they go to it i spent the months doing the negotiations well they come and then that was uh, then my value but then i stayed there for a year almost but then i i missed back the concept you know the uh, my greater ambition you know okay you know being a trader is great you know i can i found i can solve a problem and then you know i can make money but this is not my ambition your ambition was my my ambition was to i mean, I mean uh, my ambition is to to create something meaningful impactful and to be honest quite substantial and the only place i knew that that was going to happen was in africa and back you know and then i went back and uh, then by going back i then start to look around and i said a country of 200 million has no last mile delivery What's going on here? Oh, like, well, uh, you know, how is this possible? So th what's amazing is you've kind of used your hurt, little bits of every experience you've had, good and bad, Hurtwood, family business, China, the mistakes you've made, and then you come back to Nigeria and to create Oya Now. Take me back to the birth of it. Maybe if you can remember that first Definitely. day. How was that? Because I've read somewhere that it started with just a single bike outside a shop. Is yes, that correct? Yes. I, to what it I is can now, show right? you later the picture. Yeah, do, you please. Know, I yeah, can yeah. Even share it. So we even like rented one bike and then, you know, put it uh, outside and say, you know, let's attempt this. Yeah. You know? And then at the same time, you had to like explain to like what we call a marketer. We don't call them a driver, you know, like actually follow Google Maps. You know, it's like, what? Yeah. You know, I was thinking like, what's this? You know? So you were trying to change percep perception <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's something that me and you and, and probably people yeah, listening fully understand, given. but they didn't. Absolutely, and that was not. a challenge. One of the questions I was asked in the beginning by some of them, and the nice is like he asked me, "Sir, so I'm really not, not speaking the pigeon English that we would speak between each other." It's like, "Sir, can I ask you something?" Yeah. He's like, yes, please go. He's like, "Can you tell me how is this knowing in advance that there is traffic?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you know, for example, you know, like well, I think the same uh, with Waze and Google yeah, Maps. Yeah, like, how does it know? Yeah, how does it? You know, it's like asking me. <laughs> How is this, you know, <laughs> how does this tell me that in advance that I should avoid this particular area, you know, and then, but you know, I'll say something. <laughs> Nigerians are probably one of the most resilient, entrepreneurial and adaptable individuals I've ever met. And that's not just because I'm third generation there. Sure. You know, once they, they got into it, catch up, that's it. It flows. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, ha, okay, this is good. Now, how do I make use of this for my benefit also? You know what I mean? Sure. So then you start to see, like, some of them, you know, will be, like, calling their friends, tell them, you know what, you know, avoid that area. Don't go to <laughs> there. You, so you they know? were like, oh, my God, he, yeah. he's like, God, how does he know? Yeah. yeah, you know, and it's like, good, you know. It's like, you know, adding value to each other and making life simpler, you know. And then I, I, I started there. But, you know, look, when you were saying learn, Mm. Uh, uh, you know, we're telling facts as they are. You see, so what did I learn from my first journey yeah. is how to identify an opportunity. But then comes the second learning curve in business, you know, that, I mean, we're, we're here. So I learned now through my learning curves or quote unquote, let's say failure, you know, okay, how to identify what business to enter, you know, what would make sense to the consumer. Okay, we got better at that, but then what's the next stage? You know, there's one thing saying being able to understand how to identify an opportunity, but then how do you then build internally a, a, a company itself? Sure. And that became a totally different journey by itself. You know, so then I went from, that's my first time. So then you would only say, I'm now I'm six years in. So my first three years, I focused more on creating the brand name, the consumer base, and doing it totally different than my competitors, which is high cash burn. You know, if I even tell you how much we've invested from the get-go till now, I mean, sometimes when investors sit around or ask me questions and I tell them the, the amount, they said only. You know, so I try to look at it from a different approach. But then how do you then structure a business internally? How do you build a culture? How do you streamline these things? That's a totally different uh, learning curve one must go through. Yeah. You know, and then I must admit that my first two, three years at it, especially at board level, wasn't easy lots of uh, back and forth you know trying to understand to say to then probably say when when do i think i have sort of have a good 
understanding on each part of creating a business and identifying an opportunity and structuring a business, I would only say that was accomplished like two years ago. So, so you're always learning, you're always moving. Oh, definitely. And, and I suppose that's key to being an entrepreneur. If there's someone listening at home who is right at the start of that journey, you face so many difficulties coming up to it. And obviously, once you started the business, what drives you on? How do you keep going? When things, you might have a bad day and go, everything's gone wrong today. I'm, I've taken a step backwards. What's the drive? I love creating. Yeah. So, and you know, what drive me first to, I mean, I did not necessarily look to go into this entrepreneurial journey, but, you know, was also proving a point to my family that, you know, you conform to A, I can do B, and that doesn't mean I will not be successful. So I would not like to say that I was, I was awoken as a young individual, yeah. and what I wanted to do was to create. What spurred me on first was to prove a point. Wow. But uh, after doing so, I stand, you know, I just love solving problems and creating. I mean, the amount of different ventures I'm in now, I mean, I'm in such a diverse portfolio, like from online gaming to carbon credits to solar to farming to... Uh, multiple different businesses in different jurisdictions i enjoyed the challenge of seeing something coming to life yeah you know so that's what really drives me you know it drives me to create like i will be leaving in the next uh, on the 31st of january i go to mexico so i'm going to mexico to create you know a new footprint so i enjoy going to terrains I enjoy obviously using what's my what I'll consider my key strength is adaptability and network and I would like to create a global footprint you know so my ambition is to be in as many possible ventures around the world doing it with my close friends at the same time reconnecting and at the same time achieving um, results so I, I like seeing things come to life and I, I do that constantly and non-stop to be honest yeah like a, it's a seven seven days a week it's uh, i don't remember maybe when's the last time i could say i had genuinely had a day off no really or, or, wow. or a break because you're no. always moving and looking for that I'm next opportunity always moving and looking yes i'm sitting down with friends because uh, I mainly work with my networks because that also bridges a lot of gap of you know I believe most businesses fail due to who you engage with rather than the idea the idea is one obstacle but it's obviously who are the stakeholders too so I mainly work with my friends but yes you're reconnecting friends but all you do is talk about opportunities of course I mean constantly and that's why I, I like seeing and I like calculating steps and I think the world well this is again my assumptions you know uh, COVID happened, I think, in my personal view, COVID happened for necessarily realignment of the new world to fast track it. So I believe like prior to COVID, everything was already set in stone, you know, and then COVID just opened up everything like yeah. that. So the best opportunity, I believe, is when everything is up in the air, you know, that's where you can find abundant new opportunities. So I believe in the last two to three years this gap is coming in now and I think this is probably the last year and the next probably 2024 2025 before we settle and conform into a new system so this is the time to fit in this is know, the time to go yeah, yeah. yeah to make because prior to COVID your there was already a global system and a world order that was uh, in flow and obviously there are realignments going on now and when everything is up in there that's when is the best chance to actually fit in and be part of the, sure. the next 30 years. And, and with the pandemic and, and all you're now, because you're a little bit into the business, you've started forming it, it comes along and obviously an awful time for in kind of health reasons for many people. I know you said in Nigeria it wasn't quite as strict as say we had in the UK with lockdowns and things like that. But demand for your services, I believe, increased by 10,000%. Yeah, I mean, it was even more. Huge. I mean, we just had to put a number. Sure, yeah. <laughs> for the website, yeah. <laughs> no, we honestly, generally, just it was just astronomical. And how, so that demand, how did, how did you get supply to, to meet it? Cause well, the good thing is that I prepared very well. And that, that was one thing my board in the beginning were saying, you know, I was too focused on the human aspect of it, but the business is made up by its consumers and its people. So my people were, um, I mean, my workforce is basically a, 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 a military, you know, and they're conformed by, bounded by culture and by those three principles, which we call convenience, reliability, quality of service. And everything was already set in place and they were actually itching to go, you know, and then COVID just came, boom, and then opened them. I mean, there is no marketing budget in the world. 
that's going to be given to you to say, you know what, <laughs> I put everybody at home. Yes. I, you know, your your consumers are there. They are, can't They're leave. waiting for you. They're, yeah. they, you know, they can't leave. And on top of that, I'll empty the roads. Yes. <laughs> you know, and then... You've got the whole of Nigeria yeah, for yourself. You know, yeah, just yeah, go yeah. for it, you know. <laughs> so I just told them, this is once in a lifetime. And if we want to prove our weight in the market, go. And look, I'm not trying to show off here, but the nice comments was like, you know, because prior to that, you know, somebody, most people were telling me you're a bit ludicrous, you know, and thinking you're going to go head to head, you know, with companies that are publicly listed, you know, and then what budgets are you using? I was like, those three principles is going to set me apart and it will. And then they were, you know, nice way. I mean, most people always like to give you, you know, like a little laugh about things. But I said, those three things will make me win eventually. And then when that happened, we absolutely absolutely destroyed the competition i mean i mean they, they were they were they were all over the place <laughs> you know and hopefully a huge and, party uh, as well and then, <laughs> yeah. yeah and it felt great i mean it felt great and and i can <laughs> see your hard work from day ones of hurtwood and and dealing with the setbacks and you to uh, spoke about making risks and taking yes. risks and and you believed in your strategy and it was rightly um you were awarded in 2020 the people's choice award at the real innovation awards at the london business school which is uh, i don't know maybe accolades mean a lot to you maybe they don't what was that like getting that recognition because you always believed it yourself but then getting recognition yeah, elsewhere definitely great. i mean I, I i was nominated so i was not aware of it until they reached out so that was the a shock uh, <laughs> you know point and then i mean i i i, I liked it because i mean if, if you tell me i mean i i really liked it because it's 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 what the award is for you know never giving up you know and and i always like the the point of you know everything is against you kind of thing and then you stand up and basically you know you just don't give up i mean i, w I would take that be more, better than any other uh, uh, other awards or recognition i mean being able to survive such a hard journey and then at the same time taking such a monumental task in a market like nigeria yeah, and then being, you know, saying, you know, basically being so stubborn and not throwing in the towel is 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 something I I, I cherish, and that also helped me, you know, because you know most life in general, I'm sure you know by yourself. I mean, we all know who we are, but society is that you you need some Twitter tick. So basically, what did that award indirectly also gave me was like to my wider network and this. Okay, what did it translate to? It translated to. Abbas can survive this environment. So if anything happens, we know that he can sustain pressure. Yeah. It also means that if we are to start a new business, chances are um, he has the experience and the tenacity to endure the, the dynamic changes yeah. of the market. So Absolutely. that's what it translated to. And it was to. a confirmation of something you had always believed yourself to everyone else that actually... He did know what he was doing. And maybe people called you ludicrous. Maybe people called you crazy. But it must be nice to have that. Definitely. definitely. Yeah, they definitely gave me what I would consider that verified Twitter tick and then yeah. propelled my career further down. And then now, which is like, uh, opens up a million more opportunities and people will listen to your advice when it comes to how to set up in, in a very, very dynamic and you know what we consider organized chaos yes absolutely and do you know what? you've spoken about obviously going to mexico at the end of the month yeah. and all these other little setups i'm so excited to see what you're going to do next but i won't let you give away too many exclusives and ruin your business yeah. plans but before we wrap up today abbas i want to talk you've given some amazing quotes and inspiration and some advice for younger people i read an interview of you and you gave a quote and you've kind of already mentioned it network is net worth Definitely. and it's something I feel as well in my career, it's all about meeting the right people. Is that key to being successful? Uh, I think it's key to being successful in practically every sector you mm. can, because it's always going to be, I mean, this is how the world is, is built in, is who do you know? Of course, merit is there based on what you are capable of, but in general life, it has to be who, who do you know? Or how can you reach, you know, to a certain um, avenue in order, in, in order to even present what you have? So definitely... I agree with that, and uh, I believe that, and that, that will not change. And I actually believe it will. I think you could even have a better chance in the past in able to get into things without having a, a network. But I think even moving forward, it is more critical to your survival, even as an individual in any sector you're in. 
is the key to meet people and and, and and let them know what you do as well. Look, think about it also from another way. I mean, everything is decided by human beings. As much as we have AI now moving, yes, maybe sure. 20 years, 25 years, but you need to or convince or acquire or get. I mean, eventually it's a, an individual that needs to say yes. Absolutely. Something. So you need to be able to prove your point or or state your claim to the right individuals and at the same time you need to have your people skills enough you know to also project confidence i mean at the end of the day if somebody wants to engage with you or something they need to know are you, are you confident enough that, that that this could work and i focus on the psychology uh, and obviously the people i mean that that's the product and that's the key final words then on hurtwood as as we're here if there's someone listening or watching at home now it's it was maybe is it fair to assume that if you'd stayed in old education systems you might not have learned the things you know now why hurtwood if there's a young entrepreneur out there wants to start a business but they need some guidance why this school First of all, it's out of the box. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, it's tailored to you as an individual. So I think we all have points in our characters or personalities that need special attention to. And at the same time, you know, we're all not made from, you know, one plus one equals two. And I think when you come here, you, you would be given the opportunity to even explore, you know, see what works for you. And then, you know, if you need as much assistance as possible, as long as you have the willingness you know, to, to, to want to learn and to achieve. I mean, the platform here is perfectly made for you and, and also the general environment as a school. I mean, I can even remember back then, you know, like even the, the school in general, I mean, all different houses, individuals, I mean, you, you, you got along, you know, so, and you and the amount of background and different subjects, you, I mean, you go from economics to math, you know, to, to media, to theater, I mean, yeah. like, I mean, you couldn't get a more diverse uh, school, yeah. uh, school, you know, all compact together and you all, uh, you all get along and I think it builds your character. Another part to it is what I really appreciate was preparing you for, you know, life after school, you know, so treating you more like a, okay, we're young, we're not adults yet, but I mean, the point is like saying, okay, this is the next step, you know, and then I felt such at peace and at ease here and it, it made me confident. I even remember my first two years of uni, I, I barely even had to, 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 to learn anything new. You already knew it from here. <laughs> you know, not sincerely. I mean, I'm, I'm being frank. I mean, it was so well, you were well channeled. Yes. <laughs> you know that. I mean, that's why I say it's, imp it's so difficult to fail. Yeah. I mean, you, I think you generally need to put an effort to fail here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll quote that up for the website. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? And it's fascinating. Across this series, interviewing many people from different backgrounds and different time of being in the school, they've all said the same thing, yeah. that they give a lot to the school and the, and the, the channeling of the education and the definitely. system here has helped them today. Definitely, definitely. So much so. I mean, I had two more cousins and my, my I mean, first cousins and hopefully, I mean, my other cousin will be joining in September. Fantastic. You know, like for me, like, no, no, uh, <laughs> frankly, like, frankly speaking, I, I genuinely always, always, always say that this is the, the best place and, uh, and I have nothing. I'm very grateful for it and, and for as long as anybody would like to listen and especially from my side, I mean, this is where they will end up and I think this is the best starting point for one. We really appreciate your comments and really Thank appreciate you. you coming back. Thank you. Abbas, everybody. Thank you very much. You. We really hope you're enjoying Beyond the Hill. To catch up on every other episode, head to YouTube and Spotify right now, or you can follow all of our social media channels to never miss a moment here on Beyond the Hill. <laughs>